Okay. This is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to give you our review from Off oh, the Great and Powerful. I even brought out my emerald green hat. Yeah, actually, I okay, have so green Patrick's on. Coming up. I do have green on. I have too. my green. I have my Arnold white lifting sweatshirt. I have not um, much green on. Yeah. Okay. But, okay, but um, we actually went to a press screening of um, of of the show, which we were very we, we we totally did almost pass on the press screening because the. Re, the re, the preliminary reviews that people had, they, they were sending us the reviews, folks. Yeah, and part of it is the reviews. Now, I didn't read any of the reviews. I saw the headlines, and I was actually quite amazed at the headlines. And I'm like, they totally trashed it. What happened, right? And we almost didn't go see it because we thought, how are we going to see a movie after we've seen such horrid headlines oh. and have it? So we're not like just totally like tearing it up. Oh, and, and everybody, the actors were all trash. The only one that got any positive thing was um, Rachel Weiss, and they were complaining about the fact that she didn't really have material. So, and then we also, we've actually, we've had the opportunity to be, be stiffed by James Franco, folks. So, you know, I mean, really <laughs> Oh, stiffed. just because he didn't go to his own Oscar after party? Yeah, you know, so we, we, we've, we, we also have seen a lot of Franco movies in he, you know, I, I've seen his special exhibits. I've met him personally. He actually is. He's a nice person, yeah. but as an actor, you know, he, you know, I, I really don't think much of an actor. But now I've seen him in The Wizard of Oz. In not The Wizard of Oz. It is not. No matter what the reviewers are saying, the positive reviewers are talking about. You know, they they basically salute to the director of the original director of The Wizard of Oz, Victor Fleming. No, it's not. Mm. See, part of it is if you're expecting to see The Wizard of Oz, like reincarnated or the new style, no, this is this is not The Wizard of Oz. This is Oz the Great and Powerful, which actually happens before The Wizard of Oz, because what is the date in it? 1905. Which it clearly states at the beginning of the movie. That's right. And um, also, it, that, the only homage it really plays to The Wizard of Oz is the fact that it does the black and white opening, but the black and white opening is an integral part of the whole movie because it just starts with this is a movie that is 3D from totally from the first frame you come into the movie to the last frame that you go out. The titles are superior. The t titles are amazing. And they, they, they go with the beginning they lead of you the, right into leads the movie. You in the movie. It literally, they literally. literally lead you into the beginning of the movie because, um, you know, and it, what happens is They've they mask off both sides of the of the frame so that you only see this box, mm -hmm. which is you know God I've never seen a picture that small on a big screen before. You think mm -hmm. what's going on? You know you think it's 3D, but why is it so small? Mm -hmm. And then you find out why it's so small, mm -hmm. so that they can go like that. When they hit the color, yep, and the color, and it does. Oh, it, the color hits you like a it, like a wall. Like a wall. It's like a wall of color. Like um, it's you, all of a sudden you're like, I woke up in a dreamland. Yeah, I woke up in Oz. If we were privileged to go to a, a press preview of the Life of Pi, mm -hmm. which we heard had really exciting, you know, photography and stuff, and we can guarantee you that this is in the category of the Life of Pi and Hugo, of whom we also liked. Yeah, Hugo was my Because thing. it was 3D. De okay, this is a movie you're not going to like in 2D. It is not oh, you going might. It is not, it's not this going is, to be the same. This is a movie that is meant to be seen in 3D on a big screen. On a big screen. Yes, you can watch it in other forms, but that's how it's meant to be seen. It was shot in 3D. Okay, the effects were done in 3D. It is a work of artist. The, from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the moment... The first frame of this film starts to the end, to the last frame. It is a work of art. It is, you know, sometimes, um, uh, like I said, I used to get in big trouble when I was in college. We'd get into thing between a craftsman and an artist. They said a craftsman is just somebody that's good at his field. An artist is, is this, that's this, that's well. This is a work of art done by artists mm -hmm. that are extremely brilliant craftsmen in the field. So that would piss off all my instructors. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, that... Um, Okay, the the 3D. I generally bitch about the a fact the that panning, 3, the panning. It. I hate the panning because they really don't know what they're doing. And if you look closely in the movie, 
I will almost bet there was a change in cinematographer somewhere in the early part of the film because all of a sudden I saw a change in the way the film was being done. Mm. They were using they had a prop they were using zoom lenses, mm. and when is what happens when you use a zoom lens in 3D, everything is out of focus. All of a sudden during the um, during the black and white sequence, the black and white opening the thing, the zoom lens went that direction. Mm -hmm. And you ended up with a break with a straight lens, and everything became depth of field. Mm -hmm. That is when you've got a guy that knows what he's doing about 3D, because you want to have you want to have the foreground, the background, everything in the center, in focus the entire time. You'll notice it in the movie, in the process, in the black and white sequence. All of a sudden, Franco and the audience and the people and the things around him all become in the same frame. Mm -hmm. All of them not out of focus or anything, and it stays like that. There's no, I, there's no zooming in, no, there's no physical zooming in of the camera after that point. They're doing it oh. with the computers, you know, so, and it really, it looks magnificent. It looks like um, the one thing... See, that's one of the things he picks up all of those things. Yeah, like uh, one thing I can't agree with some, with the later reviewers is that it shows you how brilliant the, the uh, people in 1939 were that they made a movie that looked that good with what they had to work with. Oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah. They, yeah. That's uh, and they didn't have this. They didn't have these Oscar nominations then because. 1930. That's over 70 years. Oh, 75. actually, it's 75th anniversary. 75th anniversary. So um, it's just um, the uniformly. Okay, what we're very happy about is the fact that it is Disney has came back, folks. I mean, it is vintage Walt Disney. Something, if you were grew up watching Walt Disney movies, you know what Disney movies were like. Mm -hmm. Just from the first moment you walk in with the opening sequence, with the, with the, I mean, it's really a beautiful This, this is the magical world of Disney. It is the magical world yeah, of Disney. Definitely. And the colorful magical world of Disney. And the black and white world of Disney before the wonderful world of color. It has a beginning that you'll love, a middle that you'll love, and an ending that basically sets you up for God knows how many sequels. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the different actors and actresses that are in it that you will recognize is James Franco. Yep. yep. Academy Award nominated James Franco. Mm -hmm. Mila Kunis is mm -hmm. basically from The Black, the Black Swan. Swan. A Rachel Weisz, mm -hmm. Academy Award winner. Uh, Zach uh, what's his name? Zach Brock. For, for Zach Brock, who's really super important in the whole movie, even though he's only seen physically on screen in the black and white section. He actually has a really funny part in the whole movie. And he, Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams, who basically is the who is a good witch. Mm -hmm. She is. She plays the Billy Burke part, except um, thirty years earlier, and she basically okay. All the I mean, this is where you basically say. You know, you, you pay homage to the casting director because no matter what you're reading, these people were brilliantly cast. All of them, you know, Mila Kunis is playing against type. I mean, she's, you know... Um, she but, was good because she was from what you thought was good and then became really evil. And she actually did really... Yeah. yeah. She and then really uh, Rachel Weiss played mm -hmm. against type. Mm -hmm. And Michelle Williams is not known as Miss Goody Two-Shoes. God, she was totally Miss Goody Two-Shoes. Mm -hmm. but, but basically... a kick-ass goody two-shoes, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, you look at James Franco, who basically, okay, this role could have actually been played by Johnny Depp, but Johnny Depp is being too overexposed at the moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Johnny Depp would have done a fabulous job. But he is, I mean, he has, first of all, he's got, he's got so many films. And yeah, sequels. but what happened <laughs> is, is John, is, is Franco bought, brought, uh, he's yeah. more imposing than Johnny Depp. He brought the, he, 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 he basically put the Wizard of Oz, whose name is actually, Oz is short for Oscar. Mm -hmm. So he brought the character to life in a big, we're talking, he brought it the size of the whole screen. Oh yeah, I mean, you talk about high def, I mean, when actors and actresses, they get um, conscientious about how they're going to, I remember one point seeing James Franco's head covering the entire screen. Yeah. Just his head. Oh, no, that's right. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, that's confidence in your screen persona that you all let them make your head the, entire the whole screen. screen. I mean, it, you, know, you know, if you remember the great and powerful Oz thing in The Wizard of Oz where mm -hmm. they do the, 
the head. Mm -hmm. This is a head a hundred times bigger. So, um, but um, effects, it, it's, I mean, I, I actually picture this movie getting a god off on the, it will probably get a Best Picture of the Year nomination. We were entertained from this movie from the beginning of it. You got a room full of, I mean, we're talking. A room full of critical we people. We are talking, the people, the biggest critics in the industry were at this screening. I was really surprised. And this is a movie of which no one went to the toilet, no one went to get anything to eat. And it was they two hours there, and ten minutes. And they sat there, uh, people were, okay, it is, uh, it is, Everything in it that you can expect from an old world Disney movie that Walt Disney would have done. There's there's a little bit of seriousness, there's sadness, there's lots of action, and there is comedy throughout. I mean, there's a lot of comedy. There's in a lot of comedy in there. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah. Him, him and the monkey. Oh, the monkey, yeah. And the, the China girl. And the China girl. China girl is really... They, the China girl is magnificent. You'll have to see the movie to understand the China girl, but that... The little 13-year-old playing that part is really good. Mm -hmm. So, And we do anticipate some, let's see, some well, Disney rides. We anticipate the waterfall being turned into a ride, the China City being made into part of the exhibit that they will have, and color. We're talking about beautiful color, color field. Oh, we watch carefully too, movie. You kind of see the horses are a different color. Yes. So, so they, the horses were a different color. There was, of course, a lion. There was a, there were scarecrows. There was scarecrows. a cowardly lion. There were scare. There, there were every. I you know what I didn't see was the Tin Man represented. I didn't see the Tin Man. I think though the Tin Man might have been represented with the scarecrows. Oh yeah, because they did kind of the the hat. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't see any red slippers because Dor. This was before Dor. This is before Doris. But. You know, and you did see winged monkeys. You saw a winged monkey and the winky guards, you know, all the big people. I remember the winky, winky guards. guards are the ones that, yo ho, yo ho, you know, they're the ones oh, that. Oh, that's they, what that was supposed to be. You know, they were the guards that they, you know, the the ones that the cowardly lion and mm. uh, them jumped on. You know, there was a yellow brick road. Yellow there was brick Emerald road City. Emerald, Emerald City. City did change a few times. Sometimes it looked really. I know. Sometimes basic, it, and other times it, it looked magnificent. It looked like there might have been like, a change in artists because the Emerald City did change. In its I mean, more multiple times yeah so i think you might have had what happens when they do effects in movies they they do that you know this goes there this goes here and this goes there and then they put them together but i'm guessing sometimes that they're actually putting a little bit of this in and a little bit of this and a little bit of this in and when the, th the three the different organizations that make the 3d movie they're not exactly conceptual the same well because it's like somebody didn't get the updated clip from Emerald City. Yeah, they didn't get it. Okay, folks, what happens is, okay, well, I, people have known this before. My, my family has been in this business since 1911. My grandmother was a script supervisor back to the days of, uh, of uh, Menlo Park and D.W. Griffin. But my grandmother's job was to make certain that there was continuity. She was a script supervisor. You know, she made certain that things looked right. It looks like what happened was somebody didn't get the memo. Yeah. That there, though you got the cities that did not look the same. It had to do with effects that they were using. Like I said, I think the effects were done by multiple companies. Which here's a good thing: people applauded the effects. Well, you know, part of it is it was noticeable, but there's sometimes it's like you really just don't. And, get it. and you're you're in the audience. There are sometimes where they they do get in the way, but this is such an enjoyable movie. Yeah. Well, okay. A lot. Okay. Here's the trick: is too most of the people know I've been involved in 3D for 61 years. Yeah, I'm that old, you know. I can't you tell by looking at me, but um, you know. But um, my pet peeve is that they do 3D wrong because you can't pan with it. But the panning was so so small in this movie. It's just like once again, it looks like somebody got an epiphany and decided that didn't kind of look right because the pans went like that and they were gone. Mm -hmm. They were gone so fast. It's just like oh, get rid of that. And we're gonna go. But it's simply. Here's the thing about 3D, you have to understand, 3D is shoot, look, shoot low and shoot close. Mm -hmm. And then you can do things like make a thing go that direction and make it, you know, uh, like some of the scenes they were making things grow bigger and smaller by moving them forward and back. And um, that makes it, it's a great looking effect that can be accomplished with, the, you know, you can actually do it. They're simply taking an object, which is what they actually have, and just move it off of the mm -hmm. thing. You don't even have to have... The artists do it because you, they uh, they have, you know, he's in the um, the hot air balloon. They could actually just take in the hot air balloon and taking it to the back of the wall, and it shrinks the thing when you're using a set when you're using a static camera lens. 
with fixed focal length, but um, that's my technical part though. The, okay, don't expect the music, okay, The Wizard of Oz was more, was music, The Great and Powerful Oz had great music, but other than one song by the Munchkins, there was no singing. There wasn't that much music in it. And then they basically cut a halt to that real quick, the Munchkins thing. They did. He's like, enough. Oh, oh there goes my hat. There goes your hat. Okay, it's Emerald City. It's yes. Emerald City, I know. But, um, you know, we actually, okay, here's my, our, our thing is, if you have a free movie, which is what, we, we tend to get it for press. press Would you pay to go see the movie? And what are we intending to do next week? Well, part of it, as we've been talking about it since we saw it, is to go see it in a different version. Yeah, in the because IMAX. Because we really would like to see it in the IMAX just to see how the effects look. And I I mean, I think this will do very, very well. If you're gonna, When you see it, you've got to see it in 3D. This is one of those classic... This is going to be a classic. Yeah, well, like we you, already know. Like you said, the, here's the trick is that this is... like The original Wizard of Oz... Was did you know it got ah uh, you know it really got a lot of of attention and awards and stuff, but it was not a popular movie. Well, this one we expect to be popular. The the there's only like one thing that it was kind of like why in the world is Rachel why she's in a gown why is she wearing black leggings? Uh, or it was actually it was sort of like or black a, a pants, pants. pants suit. It's like first of all it was out of place. The only legs you get to see in a movie are the Good Witch. Well, it, it was totally out of place, and I thought, well, maybe it's supposed to be like foreshadowing, like she's trying to be the good, you know, like she's waiting for the king, she's the good one, and then you find out she's the bad one, like the and black lady. And trying to tip you off like of the pants. But, uh, but, you know, it's like the good witch has blonde hair and was wearing white. The bad witches have dark hair and wear dark yeah. clothes. And, and you go see the movie, the movie, okay, the, what really makes the movie great is that it manages to turn directions in, in the movie and people basically, they basically accept it and because, here's the thing is about, what my gripe was about the, was about the John Carter was people today didn't know about John Carter from Mars. They know the Wizard of Oz, almost everyone in the world knows the Wizard of Oz. So you expect these characters to be such and such, but you don't know the names of the characters until there's a turn. And the whole movie just turns like this and it turns in such a manner that people, you know, when they find out, oh my God, that's Glenda. <laughs> you have to understand. See, part of it is I don't remember. I just remember the good witch, the bad witch. The bad witch. Can you but remember the bad witch. I remember Dorothy, the okay. scarecrow. Okay, by the time you see this, the movie will be out. So we'll tell you the good witch is actually the bad witch, and the bad witch is actually the good witch. Oh, yeah, I guess we can tell them that. No, but they will, the movie will be out. That, that's time. your twist. That's your that's twist. They were... It is a real, and they handled it brilliantly, folks. Oh, I, I would like to win. You know, is that the best you can do while well, a short notice? <laughs> that, was the, that was James Franco to the, good, to the, the newly found good witch. That, that, that wasn't very impressive. You know, he's doing impressive stunts, and she's, you know, on, I mean, fog. <laughs> yeah, no. And oh, here's something though that also did bother us about it. What the uh, Rachel Weisz and Mila Kunis basically are doing, you know, the like the like the standard motion picture zip zaps and things with from their hands. And the good witch has got a wand. Yeah, why does the good no witch sense. have to have a wand and the bad witches don't have a wand? We couldn't understand that one whatsoever. I mean, the, there there will be a few things. You're like, why did they do that? Because the bad uh, who knows? Yeah, but um, like I said. It is oh, you know what? I just thought about it. Didn't the good witch have a wand in the Wizard of Oz? Yeah. The bad witch didn't have it. She just had the broomstick. She had the broomstick. You know, but still, she actually did things with the broomstick, and she did things with uh, actually she did things with potions and stuff. I mean, but uh, but we do know, um, like I said, there if the movie is a success, which we assume it's got to be a success. The the end of the movie specifically, they're basically they're setting up. What you saw in the Wizard of Oz, which is the you know the special of the, the chamber and all this stuff, he says specifically these words. He said we're setting everything up for when the two witches return, and they will return. The optical word is two witches in the Wizard of Oz. It comes thirty years later. Mm -hmm. The wicked witch, uh, one of the wicked witch is killed, and the other one 
you know, there the house falls on them. The problem is there are two witches, so there's a sequel on the. We know that we know that Sam Raimi works in in sequels and stuff. He did. Well, actually, see, part of it is since there's like thirty years in between, they actually could have another one and they got that young, comes out. They have young performers before. Another one that comes out before the timing of the actual Wizard of Oz. I'm or assuming it's got to be Sam one Raimi. more. There has to. Okay. Remember, this is a, a wizard that is 30 years younger than the yeah, wizard. Yeah, so you could actually have us. several of them. So that there would it. probably be, and uh, like I said, with young performers, okay, what happens is the two witches, don't, you don't worry about the bad witches because they come like the Margaret Hamilton witch in the Wizard of Oz. They, they, look, they There's true South show. But um, the, the only one that really has to look cute, actually, um, okay, most people, they know Billy Burke is the good witch Glenda, Okay, um, like most people that have seen, they know that Billy Burke played the Good Witch Glenda, but she played the Good Witch Glenda as an older woman. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Michelle Williams can be allowed to age. Oh, that's true. As can... Uh, and, Mila and, Kunis. And Mila and Kunis, they can all be allowed to age. They, because they're, it, it, they're set up. Uh, the, every character that is in this movie can be allowed to get older over a span, they could actually, this is, in a sense, they set up a franchise almost like the, um, the you know, a, a franchise that can last for another 30 years. Yeah, because you do the fill-ins to the Wizard of Oz and then you can have Dorothy continue on. That's right, because Dorothy, uh, you know, basically what it does is that it gives the um, MGM, which actually, MGM, which is Turner and stuff, actually owns the Wizard of Oz itself, an opportunity to advance the Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. from the point where Dorothy Gale, mm -hmm. you know, uh, did this because she, because they have done movies where Dorothy revisited Oz and stuff. Yeah, that's the unusual part is it's a different company. One's MGM. Anyway, that's the unusual part is one is MGM and one is Disney. Yeah, so right. it'll be interesting to see how the two companies will expand the franchise. Yeah, I think that it, basically it's a chance to uh, revitalize one and bring the other back to... Basically, Disney right now is, being, is known for the Pirates of the Caribbean and for uh, the fact that they now own Lucas and that they own Marvel. So they're going further in this one direction than they would another. But this is this brings back Disney. This is if you if you grew up watching Disney, you've now seen Disney turn the clock back to the way Disney was during the days of Walt Disney. Which, Interesting. So I, I, you know, it's just like I said, this is a this is this is a god awful movie that they will trot out every yeah. year. Yeah. I think it basically this is the movie that gives you reason to want a big screen 3D TV set for when it. Oh, bring yeah. out. It, it basically it sets the standard. I mean, like I'd love to see what it looks like in 4K. Now that would be good to see this in. Yeah. Yeah. So but our recommendation is this. Um, okay, we've had 3D movies that we've really enjoyed, which was um, the Transformers, which was actually meant to be in 3D. Hugo, which was meant to be in 3D. The Life of Pi, which is meant to be 3D, and now. You know, the movies that we recommend were all meant to be in 3D, which is the, the Oz are Great and Powerful. That's the difference. It's a movie, we've really not been happy with movies where they 3 d the stuff after the work. But this is a movie, because of the graphics, was a 3D film from the first instant, from the first frame to the last. So you'll get your money's worth. And my problem is, oh, here's one I haven't got seen before. This is a movie that the, the concessions people are going to hate. Oh, because people are so into the movie, they don't get up. They're so into them. the movie. You get into the movie because they don't keep you, they, they don't allow you the opportunity to be... You don't want to leave. There's not, this is not a movie where there's a point where it's like, oh yeah, this is a good time to refill on popcorn. Uh, right? No. no, this is So not. get your popcorn and your drinks beforehand because you will be seated the entire time. Yeah, actually, which is a good way to bring the movie. You get your drinks and popcorn beforehand because you're not going to want to leave the movie. Mm -hmm. So until, until we actually... Next time, which is when we'll go see the IMAX version and tell you how great the IMAX. Okay, here's it is. We are 
she loves to see the, the, she likes the technical stuff. I was born into the technical part of the industry. I like the technical so, stuff, but I, I like the, it, but this movie is like, this is pure entertainment. It's entertainment. Pure entertainment. When you get critics laughing, when you get critics applauding. See, while we are, we're, we're basically, we try to represent you, the critics are basically representing the fact that their job, critic means to criticize. If they say something good about a movie, it's because it's actually good. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when they say things bad, it doesn't necessarily mean the movie's bad because we will flat out guarantee you, the movie that we saw is not the movie that I read all the bad reviews on. Mm -hmm. It's not the movie that this morning they said bad reviews on also. So I guess until we can report on the IMAX version, this is okay. And this is not a spring chick, and we're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more information, you can go to www.moneybubbles.net on the net or our commercial site, which is www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com. And wherever you're watching this, subscribe to us. Follow us on Twitter uh, at Monty Bubbles. Follow us on, um, actually like us on Facebook at Monty Bubbles Network. Oh, actually, what's the other one? The Pinterest? And on Flickr. Yes, we're on Monty Bubbles. So anyway, come check it out. But most of all, keep coming back for more.